some of the most comfortable shoes money can buy right there. We fixing to close out 2023, doing what Mark Rose loves, and that's going crappie fishing. Y'all come along for the ride. Gotta have some coffee. It's a long road from Amistad to Toho. Doesn't matter which way you go, the miles are all the same. When you finally get there, when you pull the cover off, then it's time to get a little bit lost out on the lake. Gonna bag this boat into the water, find a way. Man, I'm excited to go crappie fishing with you guys today. This is what I love to do, y'all. 2023 is about to be over just here in a couple of days. And we got some time to do one last show. I'm gonna do it doing something I absolutely love and that's crappie fishing. And I'm gonna break it down a little bit more in depth for you guys today. So here we go, we're fixing, uh, you know, I've been seeing a lot of pros crappie fishing and they've been honing their skills, man. That's what I've been doing the last several years and getting uh, really proficient with forward facing sonar crappie fishing. But I was crappie fishing, man, I remember whenever I was a junior in high school, going out Christmas morning and catching a cooler full of them, uh, skipping docks at one of my favorite lakes. You know, that was what I did back before LiveScope because the, the docks provided shade and it gave me something to hone in on. What we're about to do today, if it wasn't for LiveScope, if I didn't have it, I couldn't do it proficient. So, uh, Docks is one way that you can shoot in the wintertime if you don't have live scope or brush piles, things like that. But yeah, I've been seeing a lot of guys doing it, getting, you know, honing their bass skills, and that's great. I've been doing that ever since fast or, or forward imaging uh, ever came out. And so that's what we're about to go do today is break it down for you guys. I'm gonna tell you all about the whys, the how-tos, the, the setup, all that. So. Let's don't waste any more time, let's go. We're not gonna win any races with the little Mercury 9.9, but man, this thing is very dependable. Um, and it just helps me get around all these little small lakes around my house. I absolutely love it. This Sea Arc is just my little meat boat, man. It's just, I've got it set up. Electronics like what are on my, my bass boat. And so that helps me be real proficient uh, with my bass setup. You know, it's got the same Monster Marine lithium batteries and charger and uh, the graph, the 34 transducer. Uh, it's got everything just like my big boat does. And I set it up where it's nice and comfortable because you gotta be comfortable and safe in the wintertime crappie fishing. You know, it, the water temperatures are in the 40s. So uh, you just gotta be real careful and you gotta have plenty of room. And that's what I like about uh, this sea arc is it's nice and wide. It's got a good deck on it and uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really loving this little boat. Let's turn her off and get out here and put the troll motor down and let you guys see what I do. All right, I'm kind of out here in the middle. Um, there's been a lot of shad out in the area and you really just have to find them. You have to put the troll motor around, down and that's exactly what, the, you know, panning. They called, first called this pan optics, but you're just panning using your optics and the scope and just 
you know, getting out here and chasing the bait down and trying to find these schools of crappie that are, and every now and then you'll find a, a bass and I've got a Strike King uh, Baby Z2. I got it on about an eighth ounce head and I keep one of these handy in case I do see a, a big bass. I always keep a little bass rod handy in case you see a great old bit because this is a time of year where you can find you a great old big one. All right. Okay, so here's the bait flickering around. You'll see sometimes those are school of bluegill underneath down there on the bottom. A lot of times they're crappie, but those are, I mean, you can slow down and really, you know, pick those apart, but I'm really looking for those active crappie that are up in the water column feeding on, looking for schools of shad. So I'm really not, concern with all of that on the bottom right now although a lot of those are crappie especially these bigger ones right there boat now you see those that little group of them that's a little water crappie there's a bigger water crappie we just need to get up to them and uh i keep my skate you know 80 90 100 um i like to when i see them i like to Get it down to about 75. But sometimes you don't always have to just see your bait as long as you'll get to the point to where you'll get so comfortable with it you feel like you're right in them. I knew that cast was a good cast, so I just kind of let it go. We're not keeping, it's a little one. And we're not keeping any of these today. We're just uh, for the sake of just shooting the show and show, showing you guys, you know, kind of how to catch them. All right, there's my jig going down. So I want to keep it right above them. And again, I don't have to see it the whole time. Sometimes it's good to see it, but I know kind of where it's at. I kind of kept it above them. small ones see my jig now I don't want to get it too far down in them kind of keep it up at the top level of the crappie and once it gets up there where they're at oh this is a good one that four pound line is strong so I have a little hammer I saw it, but it was after it was after it had already fell down in them. I see it coming through them down there. All right, let me reel it up and really. All right, there's my jig falling. See it coming through the top of them? There's one coming streaking as hard as he can after it. Here he comes. Here he is. Made all the difference in the world when I could see it. Mainly because that wind was catching it and pulling my jig through there and I was able to slow it down for him. You can actually slow your bait down by stop reeling and let it soak in them. And all those are little, just little things that you'll pick up on when you're, when you're out there. You just read out all the fish. I could see, I was like, man, my, I didn't get bit those first two times. Then I, when I got up there to see it, I could see my jig was floating too fast through them and they weren't reacting. So I realized that they wanted it a little bit slower. So now I'm actually getting close to them and really letting it soak in them. Barely. And it's making a difference. 
all of these schools are something different, man. You just, some of them like it fast, some of them like you sitting there shaking it. And these are liking it just kind of sitting in the middle of the school, dead sticking. There's a bass right there, y'all. Remember how I told you I like to keep a bass rod handy? You can tell that old bass blowing out there like a stop sign. That was a darn crappie. Golly, look at this thing. <laughs> I thought it was a bass. And crappie liked the old baby Z too. Look at that thing. That's a hammer. I saw it sitting out there, it looked bigger than, you know, you can usually tell when they're bass because they're just bigger than everything else. He had to have it. I mean, just had to have it. Old Strike King Lightning Shad just had to have it. It's a good one too. Now see, if I wanted to fish for these fish and I didn't have forward imaging, I could uh, do some side pulling. You know, a long time, I remember 15, 20 years ago when I'd be at Horseshoe Lake, uh, I'd be the only one shooting docks and fishing all winter and bill dance and uh, a couple guys would come out there and they would pull. They would have little rod holders kind of leaned up deal on the side and they'd put their motor, trolling motor, right in the middle and they would pull sideways and you would basically have a 18 foot platform for you to be able, you'd cast a rod out there. It would have two little hair jigs on it. Cast another one here, another one here, and another one here. And you would just have this wide 18 foot plane where you just kind of troll along, watch your rod reach down there and you could do this like that or you could spider rig for the people that like to get out there with minnows and spider rig them i just uh man there's a group right there all right see my jig going falling down in them now keep it right above them don't let it fall down in them see you'll see one streak out of there there he is See my jig riding up high? Now watch one come up. There he comes. Ooh. Sweet mama. Sweet mama girl. Oh, big girl. Look how thick they are across the back. Man, pretty. It's down in there where it needs to be. It's tough in the wind, and y'all don't realize it, but I got a guy hovering right around me like a grizzly bear. So it's, it's this ain't real easy, but we're, I do want to show y'all. All right, there goes my jig. All right, let's, here's my jig above those fish right there. Now see that fish underneath it? Boom, boom, shakalaka. Now when it's warmer, they don't act this, they don't feed as strong as they do like right now. But when it's cold, when it gets in the winter time, November, December, boy, they really, they act right then. Here comes a good old, 
I can tell that in there was a little bigger and he was coming hard. Hmm. Y'all, y'all don't know how much I've enjoyed doing this. Hope you've had a good time watching. I appreciate everybody supporting the Rose Outdoors channel. Uh, I know these shows are kind of longer than normal. Uh, we're gonna try to break them down, make them a little bit shorter for you this year. Um, but this is more like a show, you know, like watching Andy Griffith or something, you know. I'm, I'm trying to just provide some good uh, fun entertainment, good clean entertainment. But I do thank y'all for following. Y'all be sure and like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I don't try to do this to make a whole bunch of money. I just try to do it to share the gospel and provide some good uh, content, some good outdoor content. We're going to continue to uh, do this in 2024, maybe step it up a notch, try to make a few more shows. I'm going to try to break down at the end of this show uh, or actually we're gonna do a part two to this one. So y'all be sure and stay tuned. It's coming up here in a few minutes. I'm gonna shoot it. And uh, so y'all be sure and check it out too where I really break down exactly, you know, everything about what we're doing here today uh, in detail. But if I can give you guys any kind of tip, leave you with anything, it's just glorify God. He's been so good to us. It'll make you so happy. The less time that we can spend on these little devices that we all have in our pocket, uh, trying to keep up with everything else in the world and trying to make sure that we're liked by everybody else in the world, a whole bunch of people we don't even know, spend more time glorifying God. You know, He's created us, He sustains us, he, He's our provider, He can help us, he, he can make you a better fisherman. He created all these fish can give you a peace and a joy in life um, that is worth living. So I appreciate y'all following along. I'm going to close us out in a word of prayer. God, we just thank you for the great outdoors. We know that life's not all about hunting and fishing, but we thank you for giving it to us because it just makes us happy. And um, it's something that uh, just runs deep in our soul that we, we just love the outdoors and we thank you for it. And I just want to lift up... Uh, us as we travel throughout the year this year trying to create some good content for um, everybody watching pray that you just keep us safe out there on the road bless us with some uh, good success be with me out on the tournament trail this year be with my family while i'm gone away from them and uh, just keep them out of harm's way and just bless this outdoor industry uh, all the sponsors all the fans all the tournament organizations all the companies that have anything to do with it uh lord i just lift it all up to you because it's good and i pray that we spend more time lifting it up and and just uh praising it versus breaking it down and tearing it down and uh god i just thank you for all that you do for us but most of all i thank you for sending your son jesus that we just celebrated during this christmas time and um, living a perfect life and dying for us just like we're going to celebrate here coming up uh, this spring and, and Easter and going to the cross and paying our sin debt. God, that's worthy to be praised. And I just pray that we all will just spend more time glorifying you and less time just doing a bunch of stuff that doesn't make much difference in life. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go break it down, y'all.